Hi guys, um, here we're going to go through an example of uh, using sort of the boxes to figure out uh, a critical path. Um, so we've got a network here with a bunch of activities that need to get done. Um, you can see we've already put uh, double boxes next to each activity. Um, this is something that we might, a technique we might use to figure out the critical path or often to figure out the slack time of a particular activity or maybe the earliest start time or later start time of just one particular activity. There's a few different cases where this technique can be useful. Um, this question is asking us to uh, firstly complete the boxes. Um, remember in each box the first number is the earliest start time and the second number is the latest start time. So we work from start to finish to firstly get the earliest start times and then go back the other way or the latest start times. So let's get this started. Activity A, um, that comes from the start, so that's got an earliest possible start time of zero. It's not waiting for any other activity to start, it can start right away. Uh, likewise with activity B, that comes from the start, so its earliest start time is zero. <coughs> uh, activity A, uh, bigger pardon, activity E, that's got to wait for activity A to finish, so its earliest possible start time is two, um, because A has a duration of two. Activity F, if we follow this path a bit further, it has to wait for E to finish. So if E can start at 2 and E takes 4, then F will be able to start at 6. Um, activity I, we won't go to that yet because activity I has to wait for F to finish, but it also has to wait for G and H. So we're not really sure how soon activity I can start yet. So let's go back to um, this, this path here. We said that B could start at 0, B takes 4, so C's earliest start time would be 4. Following this path along, if C can start at 4 and takes 5, then H, which can begin when C finishes, H, the earliest possible time that could start would be 9, because that's 4 plus 5. <coughs> Again, we still don't have enough information for I yet, so we'll fill in the lines through the middle. We said that A... Uh, will take 2 to complete, so D, which can start after A is finished, D can start at 2, um, and then we can follow this path along, D can start at 2, it takes 3, so 2 plus 3 will give us 5, which means G would be ready to start at earliest 5, <coughs> and now we can look at activity I's earliest start time, so activity I has to wait for F, G and H to finish, and it has to wait for all of them to finish, so we need to pick whichever one takes the longest to finish. So F would be finished by 11, because that's 6 plus 5. G would be finished by 9, um, and H would be finished by 12. So the slowest of those, or the latest to finish, would be 12, which means that I can't start until 12. Let's make that a little bit bigger. <clears throat> um, and it's also a good idea to put just quickly add these in to put boxes next to the finish as well so that we can start working our way backwards so I can start at 12 and it takes 3 so the earliest finish time for the whole project is going to be 15 and that's the value that we're going to use um, to work backwards as well to get our uh, latest starting times because what we want to figure out is the latest time that each of these things can start um, without delaying this overall time and making it go longer than 15 um, I'll just split this into two parts, so um, we'll go through that in the next video. We've just finished the uh, forward scan for this network, and we've worked out our earliest start times for each activity, and therefore worked out that the overall completion time is going to be 15. We're now going to try to work backwards and figure out the latest starting time, which is the second number uh, for each activity. So working backwards, we can kind of think of this uh, as being subtractions, um, and there's a few little things we've got to take into account along the way. So activity I, um, we're thinking latest start time so that the overall project can still be completed within this time of 15. So if activity I takes three um, to get finished, then in order to get the project finished by 15, it must start at 12. So the latest start time for activity I is 12. Uh, activity F, if we go back here, activity F needs to finish in time for I to start at 12. Right? That's the latest possible time that I can start. So activity F, if it takes five um, units of time 
to finish and it needs to finish by 12, then the latest possible time it can start is 7. Okay, so you could have thought of that as 12 take away 5 to give you 7. And then you can sort of just check going forwards, right? If it, if it can start at 7, it takes 5, it will still get finished by 12. So that's all okay. Uh, we can then go to activity G um, and say that, again, activity G needs to finish in time for I to start at 12. Uh, activity G has a duration of 4, so it must start at the latest by 8 because if it starts at 8 and takes 4, then I can still be ready to start by 12. Likewise, we go along here to H. H takes 3. Um, it needs to finish by 12 so that I can start. So therefore, the latest possible time that H can start is 9, because 9 plus 3 would be 12. Um, and then we just kind of work our way back along these paths. So maybe we'll continue here by going back to activity C. Activity C must finish in time for H to start at 9. Um, so 9 take away how long C takes, which is 5, is going to give us a latest start time of 4 for activity C. Um, and likewise, when we go back to B, B needs to be able to finish so that C can start at 4. So therefore, the earliest, uh, sorry, the latest start time for B is going to be 0 because that's B takes 4 units of time. Um, so it must start at 0 in order for C to be able to start at 4. Um, if we go back and let's go along the top here, we have the latest start time for F. So we go back to E. E needs to finish so that F can start no later than 7. So if E takes 4 to complete, then we could say that the uh, latest possible time for E to start would be 3, because 3 plus 4 would still allow F to start at 7. Um, working back here, we actually need to kind of have both paths leading into A. So we're not going to figure out A yet um, because A has to, uh, so there are two things relying on A. So we need to work out the latest start time for D um, as well as E before we can get, get the answer for A. So D, um, we've said that activity G must start at 8. So D needs to be finished in time for that activity to start at 8, which means the latest possible time that D can finish is going to be 5 because D takes 3. So 5 plus 3 would give us, um, would allow G to start by 8. Now we can go back and do the latest start time for A. A needs to finish so that E can start at 4. So, I beg your pardon, so that E can start at 3. So based on that, the latest possible start time for A would be 1. Um, it also needs to finish so that D can start by 4. Five, which would mean the latest possible start based on this is 3. However, the, the lower one is the first one. So A must start no later than 1 because otherwise it's going to not allow E to get started in time. Okay, so the latest possible start time for A is 1 to allow E to start at 3. So we've actually now completed the scan uh, entirely and we can answer some questions um, about this, which we'll do in the next part of the video. We've now completed part A, uh, which was to fill in the boxes. We've got the earliest start times and latest start times for each activity. Um, we're now looking to identify the critical path and how and work out the length of the critical path. So the critical path, remember activities on the critical path by definition are the ones that have no slack time because we can't possibly start them any later. Otherwise, we'd delay the whole project. So all we're looking for is the path that contains activities that have the same earliest start time as latest start time. So clearly, that's going to be B, C, H, and I. Um, so that will be the critical path. The length of it is just the sum of all the durations. So it's 4 plus 5, which is 9, plus 3 makes 12, plus 3 makes 15. And we knew that because that was the completion time for the overall project. The critical path will always give you the overall completion time. So um, 15, we're not given units, so 15 minutes or days or weeks or whatever the units of time might be here. Um, just note as well, we could have also answered that question without necessarily needing to set up the boxes, particularly for this network as there were only three different paths from start to finish. Okay, so if you were just asked to find the critical path, you can always just look for the longest path as long as you're not dealing with a network that has lots and lots of paths. That's when it might get tricky. Um, question C, 
the good thing about having the boxes set up is it's really easy to work out the slack time because the slack time is just how long the activity can be delayed um, before it might start. So it's the difference between the latest start time and the earliest start time. So for activity G, it's got an earliest start time of 5, latest start time of 8, so the slack time is equal to 8 minus 5, which is equal to 3, and again that might be 3 minutes, 3 weeks, 3 days, um, whatever the case you're given in the question. So the answer for part C is 3.